This video is for educational awareness only. No hacking, no illegal activity, no demos. Everything here follows YouTube's guidelines and is meant to help you protect yourself. At 2 a.m., I found a range of GitHub tools focused on IP tracking, mapping, and passive analysis. These tools make it surprisingly easy to collect digital traces. I'll describe each tool, why it matters. Let's get started. The first tool that stood out was PEEF Passive OS Fingerprinting. Unlike active scanners, PUF just listens to network traffic, quietly analyzing the subtle differences in how devices communicate. PRF can guess a device's operating system, uptime, and network type without sending a single packet. For network admins, this is gold. You can spot unauthorized devices or unusual activity without alerting anyone. Imagine running PRF on a corporate network and discovering a rogue Linux machine among Windows devices. Instant red flag. If there's a breach, PUF's logs help reconstruct what happened and which devices were involved. Attackers can use it for silent reconnaissance, identifying vulnerable systems before launching an attack. This isn't a flaw, it's how internet protocols work. Tools like PNRF operate in the hidden layers of the internet, invisible to most users. Monitoring networks you don't own or have permission to analyze is a serious invasion of privacy and often illegal. Use P0F only on networks you own or are authorized to monitor. Respect privacy and never use these tools for unauthorized surveillance. The best use of PROF is to understand your own network and protect it. If you're curious, use it to learn about your own devices, never someone else's. The line between research and intrusion is thin. Don't cross it. Stay ethical, stay legal, and always ask, should I be doing this? That's the real lesson from PROF. Let's move on. Next up is Spiderfoot, an OSINT automation powerhouse. OSINT means open source intelligence, finding public information online. Spiderfoot automates this at scale, especially for IP addresses. Give it a target, IP domain or email, and it scours hundreds of sources, building a detailed profile in minutes. It cross-references data, IPs, domains, emails, breach records, blacklists, and more. For defenders, it's invaluable. You see your digital footprint as an attacker would. Find forgotten servers, exposed emails, or weak spots before someone else does. Spiderfoot's modules cover everything from geolocation to VPN detection to social media links. It's a one-stop shop for public data aggregation. But in the wrong hands, it's a reconnaissance engine for attackers, mapping networks, finding vulnerabilities, and gathering info for phishing. The tool itself is professional, open source, and widely used by security teams. Its website stresses responsible, authorized use for threat intelligence. The difference is intent. Are you auditing your own assets or snooping on others? Spiderfoot doesn't hack. It just finds what's already public, but much faster. Only use Spiderfoot to scan assets you own or have explicit permission to analyze. Unauthorized scanning is hostile, may violate laws, and can get you in trouble. Always get written consent before running scans on anyone else's systems. The line between research and intrusion is consent. Use Spiderfoot to protect, not to pry. If you're learning, scan your own digital presence. For companies, it's a must-have for attack surface management. For everyone else, respect boundaries and never use it for stalking or harassment. Tools are neutral, your actions aren't. Stay on the right side of the line. Let's keep going. Now let's talk about IPINFO a commercial-grade data provider. Unlike standalone tools, IPINFO is a massive database that other tools tap into. Its job, take an IP address and return context, geolocation, ISP, company, VPN proxy status, and more. This data powers everything from online shopping localization to fraud detection. When a website shows prices in your currency or blocks content by region, it's probably using IPINFO or something similar. The GitHub tools I found were official client libraries, code to help developers integrate IPINFO's data. You need an API key, and there are limits and costs. This isn't a hacker tool, it's business infrastructure. But seeing it in action demystifies IP tracking. It's not magic, just data aggregation. IP geolocation is an educated guess, not GPS. Sometimes it's accurate to the city, sometimes just the country, or even the ISP's headquarters. Movies make it look precise, but it's not. Never treat IP geolocation as proof of someone's exact location. The data is useful, but it's not gospel. IPINFO also tells you if an IP is residential, mobile, business, or a VPN, 
helpful for security, but not foolproof. The real risk is misinterpretation, using rough data to make serious accusations. IPINFO's data is approximate and often imprecise. Never use it to pinpoint someone's home or pursue individuals. Misusing this data can lead to dangerous mistakes and real harm. Use it for legitimate business or security purposes only. Data is neutral. How you use it matters. Let's keep exploring. Deeper in, I found smaller tools, IP analyzer, IP tracker, and similar tools. These aren't polished products, but collections of code that aggregate public data from free APIs. They're like budget versions of Spiderfoot, focused on IPs. Run a script, enter an IP, and get geolocation, ISP, time zone, and maybe a check against malicious IP lists. They're simple, fast, and popular for learning or quick lookups. But their accessibility is risky. Anyone can use them, often without understanding the consequences. Firing off dozens of API requests can get you rate limited or banned. More importantly, aggregating public data can feel invasive, even if each piece is harmless alone. Some tools are well-documented and warn about responsible use, others are abandoned or outdated. These tools highlight the script kitty problem, using scripts without understanding, leading to overconfidence and bad decisions. The real value is educational. Reading the code teaches you how online data providers work. But intent matters. Are you learning or snooping? The best tools include clear disclaimers about ethical use. These tools can easily be misused. Don't automate lookups on people or systems you have no right to investigate. Overloading free services can have consequences. Use these tools for education or authorized research only. Aggregating data is powerful. Use it wisely. If you're curious, stick to your own data. The line between learning and invading privacy is thin. Respect it. Next up, the most advanced frameworks. Finally, I found the heavyweights, multi-source reconnaissance frameworks like Recon Spider and OP Recon. These tools don't just look up IPs, they map entire networks, connect domains, emails, social media, and more. Start with a domain, and they'll uncover servers, technologies, employee names, and public documents automatically. It's like a detective's corkboard, but digital and lightning fast. Used by penetration testers, these frameworks reveal how public data can be connected to expose hidden relationships. For defenders, it's a critical way to find leaks and weak spots before attackers do. But in the wrong hands, it's a recipe for doxing, harassment, and targeted phishing. Aggregating public data can create intensely private profiles, connecting dots people never intended to link. These tools are for professionals, not beginners. The ethical responsibility is immense. Don't aggregate or publish sensitive data about others without consent. Just because you can connect the dots doesn't mean you should. Privacy isn't just about secrets, it's about how public data is combined. These tools are for authorized security assessments only. Correlating public data can reveal private links. Never use them to expose or harass individuals. Always respect privacy and consent. The goal is protection, not exposure. If you're learning, use them on your own data or with explicit permission. The line between research and harm is razor thin. Handle with care. That's the end of the rabbit hole. Let's wrap up. By 4 a.m., I'd seen enough to feel both amazed and responsible. These tools exist for good reasons, defense, research, but they show how visible we all are online. IPs aren't magic keys, but they're breadcrumbs that can be followed. Knowing about these tools isn't about fear, it's about making smarter choices. If you run a server, harden it and know your digital footprint. For everyone else, remember, a single data point is just a clue, not a conclusion. If you want to follow up on practical legal ways to protect yourself, let me know in the comments. For now, stay safe, stay aware, and stay curious. The internet is a web of connections. Respect them. Thanks for watching.